Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel. I'm answering question number three from the June stroke October 2020 Pure Mathematics P3 International A Level Ed Excel paper. And this question here is about this graph, this curve here, which is shown in figure one with the equation y equals f of x. Now they've told us that f of x equals 2x plus 3 over the square root of 4x minus 1, and x is greater than a quarter. Okay, and they've told us to find in the simplest form the f dash of x, which means the derivative or the gradient function of the of function f of x. So we've got to differentiate this, basically. Now, to differentiate something like this, one of the mistakes that students make is to differentiate the numerator and the denominator just separately and just keep them as numerator over denominator and they think they've done it. You cannot do that. You have to use what's called the, the quotient rule here. Okay? You've got to use a quotient rule. And if, when you have a, a quotient of two separate functions, you have to use a quotient rule, which is actually is quoted for you in the formula book. Okay, it's quoted for you in the formula book. However, there is a nice simple way of, of, of remembering it without having to look at the formula book. And it's basically what you do is you call one of them u and the other one v. Now, when you've got a, a quotient rule, the numerator has to be u and the denominator has to be v. So you have u is equal to 2x plus 3 and v is equal to 4x minus 1 to the power of a half. Okay, I'll write it in this form ready for it to be differentiated. So what you do is, so you say f dash of x. First of all, actually, you write down your u and your v here, it's better. So you write your u down as 2x plus 3. And next to it, on the right of it, you write your v down, which is 4x minus 1 to the power of a half, which is the square root of 4x minus 1. And then underneath the u, you write u dash, meaning the differential of u. Okay, so you, I'll put it, I'll put a bit of space, we've got plenty of space. So u dash, which is a differential of u, is going to be 2. You differentiate u with respect to x, like du dx, you're going to get 2. And v dash, which is differentiating v with respect to x, well, here we have to use the chain rule. So we take the thing as something to the power of a half, so we multiply by the power, and leave this exactly as it is, and then we take one from the power, a half minus a half, 1, take one away from the power half minus one is negative a half and then we multiply by the differential of what's inside the function which is four so you end up therefore with your v dash becoming a half times four which is two times four x minus one to the power of negative a half i'll leave it like that for now okay so now the the uh, quotient rule is basically when you multiply this with this so you have two times four x minus one to the power of a half and you take away from that these two multiplied okay so it's always it's really easy for you to do this without memorizing the formula uh, is, is always start from the right top right and go across down okay diagonally across down so your v multiplies your u dash and then you take away from that the product of your u and your v dash so v times u dash minus u times v dash that's going to be 2 times 2x two plus 3 times 4x minus 1 to the power of negative a half. And all of that is going to be over v squared, which is 4x minus 1 to the power of a half. And that whole thing is squared. So that's just going to become 4x minus 1, basically. And that is your f dash of x, which we have to simplify in its simplest form. So to do that, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to, the easiest way of doing this, and this is where a lot of students have made mistakes, the easiest way of doing this is to take out the common factor in the numerator. Now we can see that there's a common factor of 2, and there's also a common factor of 4x minus 1, okay, but they're two different powers here. So what you do is, when you have terms which are you know, the same term, but to different powers, and you want to take out the highest common factor, you take the lowest form of that out as a factor. So I'm going to take out 4x minus 1 to the power of negative a half as my common factor. That's the lowest form of it. And then I'm going to have inside the bracket, well, if I multiply this by something to give me that, well, the 2 is already there, 
How do I make 4x minus 1 to the power of minus half become 4x minus 1 to the power of half? Well, I have to add 1 to the power. So basically, I have to multiply it by 4x minus 1 to the power of 1. If I multiply these two together, I'm going to get that exactly. This term multiplied by that term will give me the term over here. And I've got my minus. Now, if I multiply this by something to give me this, well, the 2 is already there. The 4x minus 1 to the power of minus a half is already there. What's missing is the 2x plus 3. So I've got to put 2x plus 3 here. Okay, and that's all over. Now, this is going to be raised to the power of 2, so a half times 2 is 1. So underneath, you're just left with 4x minus 1, okay, which is like to the power of 1. I'll leave it like that for now. Now I can simplify what's inside here. Outside, I've got... I've got 2, and I've got 4x minus 1 to the power of negative a half. And inside this bracket, I'm going to have 4x minus 2x, which is um, 2x. And I'm going to have minus 1 minus 3, which is minus 4. That'll give me, that's going to give me 2x minus 4 over 4x minus 1. Okay, now, what I can do here is this, this 2x, this 4x minus 1 to the power of negative a half, that can go underneath. And on the top, I can take out another factor of, or I can even multiply that out if I want to. So the top, I can write that as 4x minus 8. And underneath, I can write this as 4x minus 1 to the power of 1 times 4x minus 1 to the power of a half which will give me 4x minus 8 over, and here these two are the same bracket, but I have to just add the powers. So 1 plus a half is 3 over 2, so you can have 4x minus 1 to the power of 3 over 2, and there's our answer, that's f dash of x is equal to 4x minus 8 over 4x minus 1 to the power of 3 over 2, and that's the answer to part A of this question. Okay, now for part B of this question. Hence, find the range of f. Okay, so now, we've worked out the gradient function of this f dash of x is what equal to 4x minus 8 over 4x minus 1 to the power of 3 over 2. Okay, I think that was it. Yep. Now, that's the gradient function. They've asked us in part B to find the range of this function. Now, the range of a function is basically uh, the y value that it can take. Now, this function, it starts from x is greater than a quarter in terms of its domain, and it continues on like this. So you can see that, that this is the turning point, which we found somewhere over here. The turning point is somewhere over here. This is this is the turning point. This is where the gradient is zero. We haven't found it actually, but that's what the turning point is. So this is where the gradient becomes zero. And you know we can basically use that fact okay to find the range because the range is going to be this this lowest point it ever reaches and everything above it. It's never going to go below that point because its turning point has one. Its turning point is going to be here. So if we find if we find when f dash of x is equal to zero, okay. If we find when f dash of x is equal to zero, we'll find, um, you know, the we need to find the y value of when f dash of x equals zero, and that will tell us uh, the range. Okay. So what we need to do first, we need to find when f dash of x equals zero. Find the x value of that first. And then substitute that into the original equation, which is this one here, f of x equals 2x plus 3 over root of 4x minus 1. And that will tell us the y value where this gradient is 0. So let's take our function f dash of x equals 4x minus 8 over 4x minus 1 to the power of 3 over 2. And we say at the, at the minimum point, because he has a minimum, 4x minus 8 over 4x minus 1 to the power of 3 over 2 is equal to 0. At the minimum, f dash of x must be equal to 0. So if we solve this equation, we multiply both sides by 4x minus 1 to the power of 3 over 2, you're left with 4x minus 8 equals 0. So 4x equals 8, so x equals 2. 
So we know that f dash f of x, our original function, we can see over here is 2x plus 3 over root 4x minus 1. So it's 2x plus 3 over the square root of 4x minus 1. So we can say when x is equal to 2, we're going to have f2 is equal to 2 times 2 plus 3 over the square root of 4 times 2 minus 1. Okay, so we got f dash f um, f2 is going to be that's 4 plus 3, which is um, 4 plus 3, which is 7 divided by, and you're going to have the square root of 8 minus 1, which is 7. And we rationalize the denominator, you're going to have root 7 over root 7. That's going to give me 7 root 7 over 7. They cancel out, so you know that f2 is equal to root 7. So we can say that the minimum, the minimum value is when y equals the square root of 7. Okay, therefore the range of this function, the range of f of x, the range is f of x is greater than or equal to the square root of 7. Because the lowest this ever reaches is this point here, which is the square root of 7. And it will never go lower than that. And this continues on and on. Because uh, this is an asymptote here forever, and this will be above there going on like this. So the range of this function is y is greater than the square root of 7, which is what we had to find. And there's the answer to this question, which is question number three. Thank you for watching. Um, other questions from this paper will be found in the playlist that should appear somewhere in this region here. Uh, other questions from this topic of differentiation and applications of differentiation from P3 will be found in this playlist that should appear over here. Um, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking the icon in the middle and on the top of the page here you'll find a, a link to a card which links you to another P3 paper that you might be interested in watching. Um, see you again soon.